Welcome back, everyone. It is another edition of SAGPI, September 7th. Today, I am presenting from the road. Uh, my setup, well, you know, my setup kind of varies a little bit, but tonight, the, there's like a steering wheel that will pop in here and there. Sorry about that. All the same, uh, whatever, we're all joining from the cloud, so it doesn't much matter how comfortable I am. Uh, all hail the glorious founder, Josh Miller. Thanks for getting us started back in the day. I really need to memorize this one. I think it was 2017, but heck, that's over six years now. Wow. Mm. Code of conduct. Eh, you know, this isn't a huge one. Like 11 people. We don't, oh, 12 people now. Hey, welcome additional person. Uh, basically, be cool. Uh, if not, um, I'll kick you out. Meeting format's pretty, pretty straightforward. Don't hold your questions. If you got an interesting question, jump in. If you got a dumb question, well, I don't know. Maybe throw it in the chat. If you put it in the chat, we'll come back to it. But we like to integrate all levels here and, uh, you know, have a kind of dialogue instead of a lecture and some Q&A. But please, no sound bombing. I'll boot you out. I'm uh, the quickest band hammer in the West. Chat with us. We've got some. We're, we're a child organization of this group called SACTEC. They do a monthly mixer in person in Sacramento, a local pizza and, and brew spot. I think it's called Hop Yard. It's pretty good. Uh, look for the guy in the really loud pink Adobe shirt and usually some pretty funky hair. Uh, his name's Mark and he's been running Sac Tech for a while. Shout out Mark Takata. Is it Takata? I don't know. He goes by the Fat Panther. I don't know what it means, but I like it. Uh, also, we've got a Discord. Oh, get out of the way. Boom, take your screenshot. Maybe that'll be useful on YouTube. I don't know how useful it was on Zoom, but both of those chat channels I'm pretty active on. Brazen Studios is my deal. And I've got a little sack pie roll in there, so I do some notifications for anyone who signs up in there. Actually, you know what? While we're at it, why don't I dump a link to at least the Discord in? Oh, that's why. Because I would need to update update Discord. Anyway, I hope to see you in there. Yeah. We got a bunch of social media too. Twitter. Well, I didn't what is it now? It's x.com. What is the verb? I guess. Yeah, it's always well, it's gonna be Twitter until it goes out of business. At least right. to me. Right, right. But what used it used to be that you tweeted and now you X or something? Ax. Like axing your question. Oh, ax or ax you, body it's, strain. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Uh yeah, if you got an X or something. Man, I'm really confused with that one. What the hell, Elon? <laughs> We've got a Reddit too, and I'm terrified of that one especially now with the whole well i guess the issue with that one is i'm the bad moderator but i, I guess i heard something about reddit being oh maybe they should spell it mastodon did they just lift that or i i don't i don't understand what do you mean yeah anyway uh yeah we got some facebook stuff too when i have more reasonable months that aren't like summer vacation months i will update those ones but yeah, sorry I didn't make it this time around. Watch our recordings on YouTube. They're awesome. The recording from this one is going to go there. Join us on LinkedIn. I put I put stuff in there. Still not getting quite as much love as it needs. Uh, if anyone's willing to help, let me know. Hang me on Slack or or uh, Discord. Okay, this is our time to shine we're gonna hop out i'm gonna oh wow this is I opened up to things sorry okay i'm gonna stop the share if you'd like to be in the uh picture turn on your camera oh it's just me and twinkles today that's fine oh all right there we go we got violet anyone else feeling uh social okay cool Try to look uh, intelligent. This is fine. I don't mind. Everything's burning. 
Okay, jump back into that presentation there. Thank you for all of that. Okay. All right, your steering wheel is in the flames. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I don't have a little mass head thing for Tony in this time, but he's got something lined up for us. In the past, he's presented on a new a number of tools. This one was, is this the Howdy thing? Anyway, it's something um, pertaining to scraping and recording some of his favorite shows from radio. Fresh Air on NPR, as well as Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And That's right. Yes, that's the got, one. He's got something working for us. So I'm going to stop the share and hand it over to him. And, and then I'll have my little thing on DEF CON 31 after that. All right, Tanim and Twinkles, take it away. All right, okay. So this is all very cowboy and there's not gonna be, I don't have too much to talk about. Basically what I'm trying to say is how do I, I have no idea how to share this. It's always something a little interesting. How do I share? I keep forgetting how to share. Green button. On Zoom. It's a green what? button. It's a green button. Uh, it's a oh, right there it is. Share screen. I'll share the whole screen. It's just too hard for me to do everything there. But I think what I'm trying to say is, back in the good old days, uh, NPR used to provide an API that allowed you to, you know, search and download, you know, all their all their shows like Wait Wait, uh, Fresh Air. Um, a bunch of shows from all the big markets, like the Koji Namdi show and things like that. A few years ago, they uh, improved their API to use something called NPR One, which is absolutely worthless. So my workaround is, as I guess you hopefully you can see from this screen that I'm sharing right here, uh, it used to be that the API died. And the workaround was using Selenium to scrape the web, basically automate a robotic human to you know, fill out search bars, clicky clacky buttons, and then you know, find the URLs that, okay, corresponds to an episode's uh, you know, website, HTML page. And you know, th at that point, I just, scrape that HTML page to, you know, get the episode names and uh, the MP3 URLs, and then, you know, basically compose that all together. Uh, oh, there we go. I was wondering if somebody uh, else asked something, but, you know, about a year and a half ago, that also died. But uh, the reason I'm speaking right now is, although that died, uh, I did find a workaround because I don't know if I was feeling bored or just uh, was trying to do something like this that was different from something even more unpleasant. I, as a, this was a distraction to you know keep me from working on something even more unpleasant. And I just uh, basically uh, I was able to work around it. And I got this uh, workaround so that these downloaders, the things that used to work, then they work with a workaround, then they died, and now they work again, uh, now seems to be working at least for about like two and a half weeks right now. So easier for me to show rather than tell. Oh, all right. Twinkles, here you go. <sighs> I figure I'll do something quick. Oh, oh, thanks for putting in those links there. Uh, yeah, no I'll problem. give you the link to this one here. Here's sort of the the engine. It's basically now you give it a you know a, a wait wait uh, or sorry a fresh air wait, wait, wait episodes date. And it's, it actually, uh, you know, gets all the information as well as the URLs. But instead of telling, let me just show what I, what I mean. 
So I know it looks kind of small. Can you see that over there? Fresh air dash L debug. And no, it gives can, the date. I can see it, but it could be better if you zoomed it in or increase the font size. That's good. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. How about now? Okay. That's a, so that's a fairly straightforward uh, CLI interface. Exactly. Um, in fact, it has, let me just put something in here. It's got a help screen that looks like this. Do, 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 do. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> there's the there's the default crap. Uh, the requirements are the date string, as in, you know, month, day, comma, year, American format. Uh, and then some optional things. So we're just going to, I'm just going to show you how to do, you know, printing out some debug crap with this. How's the feedback uh, on your end? Is it? Audio is coming through. Audio is coming through great this time. I remember the oh. first few times you went came through, you had some uh, interesting pops, <laughs> uh, but it sounded great. <laughs> yes, my. Oh, no. Every should. <laughs> so here it is. Lo and behold. Hmm. Let's see if this application. Oops, where the hell uh get it from the file? I don't know. Uh -oh. All right, silly bird. I think he just wants to be on top of here. All right, you see that? Uh, basically, there's a, this nice executable. I think, Robert, I showed this to you two, two plus years ago when I was showing my COVID tracker. Right. But there's a thing called MP4 info, which you know you can use to figure out, you know, to print out the metadata as well as, you know, summary information for mp4 or m4a files so and so it looks like this and uh so, so can, can you i guess uh, uh, Tim, can you tell us a little bit more about mp4 info so is this like a is this like a python module or? actually it's a i think it's an, a binary executable i think it's c or c plus plus underneath the hood it's so where, you know, where do you get it and installed and uh it just you know looks at the mp4 header, you know, the metadata or whatever, and mm -hmm. print spits it out. There's right. an associated yeah. uh, executable called MP4 tags that uh -huh. does that thing uh, where you can actually, you know, you know, modify or add tags to the MP4 file. Okay. Which is, uh, well, I use that functionality. I don't use MP4 tags for my tool to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. download music for free from YouTube and fill it with uh, the correct metadata. Right. It, it looks like a really useful utility. So it'd be great to find out where to get it from. Oh, okay. Let me put, let me uh, show the website where I got it. Uh, that's a good question. MP4 V2, because I think, yep, yeah, it's here. It's a bit of a, a trek, a choose your own adventure, view the project on GitHub. Uh, this is where it is. So I'm gonna put the link in the Zoom. Let's see, how the hell does anything work here? How do I get, oh, here's the chat. Right. Here's so the uh, link, just put it in there. It's uh, the last, last thing on there. So it's pretty easy to install. Uh, and there's actually a Python module called Mutagen, which uh, allows you to, you know, uh, allows you All to do everything in Python, like tag and read MP4 metadata. So actually in, for my uh, YouTube downloader, you know, song downloader. 
that's what it uses, uh, mutagen for that thing. And uh, let's see, let's see if I have the weight weight. So same thing there. Uh, you know, it works now. I'm able to get the metadata, the MP3 file, and it just uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm running in debug mode, so it's, uh, you know, just spitting out yep. most of the, you know, helpful commands and just, you know, going there. These are wait, wait, this is a wait, wait, don't tell me episode from, I guess, a week and a half ago. And let's see if I there it up. Yep, you see that? There's the metadata uh, for that wait, wait, don't tell me episode. And that's pretty much it. You know, any questions people have? I've got a blog post, I've got a I've got a blog, I've got a bunch of GitHub, a few GitHub repositories where I do a lot of this stuff. There's a Sphinx documentation. I just, you know, showed, where did I go? Gosh, everything's covered up. Uh, you know, Sphinx documentation that I have here, for instance, uh, that lives, I think what you showed Woody was just my main website. But like I also have, uh, this is basically GitHub pages. So this is how I, uh, you know, you can have with your Git, GitHub repository, GitHub pages associated with it that document your, you know, Git repository, which is what I have for NPR stuff. I talked about IVE Thanim, which I use all the time. I think uh, you moved a lot of stuff away from NPR stuff to be sort of more portable and more general, like auto-cropping mm. images. Howdy, I use all the time for, you know, music, movies, TV shows, things like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, so is your NPR stuff to the point where you can pick an arbitrary NPR show? And it really takes some love to figure out, okay, which show do you want? And, uh, you know, following a particular, it's not written as, or designed as a plug and play. Mm. That is, you know, something like here's a plugin whose specification you give as a YAML script or what have you. Uh, it involves, you know, still hooking some stuff up and right. no duplication at this stage. But I guess I sort of kind of know how to, you know, improve it or add other shows to it. So there's a there's a project on GitHub called Gallery-DL, um, and so it's a it's a yeah you can yeah easy to find. Um, lots I, I think of, yeah there's 96 contributors. And I'm sure uh, a lot of downloaders, but it's uh, it's an abstraction for downloading from you know Instagram, um, uh, all these all these different social media, in Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, um, Tumblr, all these different things for downloading uh, these posts, right? Right. Um, so, uh, it might be interesting to look at that and see if you could use a structure like that for, uh, media from different websites. And of course, there's also, um, these, uh, these branches of the YouTube downloader, right? Yep. YouTube uh, downloader, you know, it's, it's really revolutionized the porn offline downloading, uh, sort of industry. I think that's probably what it's used for 50% of the time. <laughs> a Possibly, bunch of yeah. plugins yeah, to, you know, hook, to hook up to, not just Vimeo or YouTube, but... Uh, but yeah, no, they, they did add support for all those other sites. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's actually a, a, a YouTube download plugin for 
uh, This American Life, which I use now to huh. download uh, or actually figure out the metadata as well as, you know, the uh, MP3 URL for a given This American Life episode. I guess right. it's possible. It's just, you know, a lot of work and uh, yeah. if this is open source with a very liberal license of so somebody wants to use this sort of crap right uh, they can but what, have at it. <laughs> but what both of those projects did is they figured out how to abstract the the uniqueness of the different websites so that they can the the unique features are a plugin for a generalized tool right yeah uh, this is true Yes, yes, I totally understand that. It's one of those things, you know, it's great when it works, and I do use YouTube download a lot. That's actually the engine to get, you know, YouTube uh, videos or songs um, and, you know, get the uh, metadata and get the metadata from another, you know, service, uh, basically an API, and compose them together. Actually, it's probably easier for me to show what I mean. Uh, what is it? Audi. Um, oh, I have to go to another website, or I. It's easier just to log into my machine at home. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Or. Here, what is it? Need this might take a while because the uh, that metadata website, um, you know, it's it's not very efficient. But the getting the song or finding the YouTube clip and then uh, getting that song that's a pretty oh it worked pretty well. You see what happened here? Uh, this is one of my favorite bands, Air. It's uh, from Moon Safari, and it's that song, All I mm -hmm. Need. And you just choose, you know, the song. Uh, you know, I think it has some algorithm. YouTube has some algorithm that mm -hmm. orders them. And what I do is a high-ranking choice where, you know, the, the song clip's length or the video's length matches the length of the song. So, so what is what is howdy music songs or yeah that that um that uh, tool that's uh that, that i think i've shown you this one uh a while back but that's the tool used to that you made it right songs downloads either an individual song or a whole album okay uh, so so that's your own script yeah yeah that's my own script mm -hmm. So, um, how, how big is it? Can, can you show it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can show the... Um... We can also just post a link to the other SAGPI where Tanim presented Howdy. Oh, gosh, it was a while back. Uh, there's a video of it, for instance. There's a YouTube clip of it. Yeah, I think, I know. I think 2020, I think. The 2020 or 2021? I don't remember. It was a while back. <laughs> right. But uh, but yeah, just a, just a link to it on your um, on your GitHub is is an easier way to answer those questions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's there though. I mean, it's here. Uh, here we go. To manage and here's the uh, music functionality. Howdy, music songs, and. And if you go down there, there's some, you know, animated GIFs, I think, explaining what happens. Um, okay, so there so there you show the your actual data sources, right? Um, well, this is the documentation. Are you talking about the code? No, where where do you get where do you get the information about the songs from? Oh, from this place called Music Brains. Right. And, uh, uh, I, I don't know what else to call it, but like a sort of a big, big ass server with uh, right. you know, an API in front of it. 
that allows me to query, you know, this information. Right. So your your tool calls that API. Yes, it calls it API. Right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, I guess, yeah, any other questions about that? Like, uh, we can go down the rabbit hole pretty deep. <laughs> <clears throat> Hmm. How, well, I guess I always think about things like this in terms of generalizing it as a next step. How could you point this at, say, maybe a new stream or like, a, I don't know, I guess, what if you pointed this at Twitch? How, how could you most efficiently, I don't know, say using generative AI or something, adapt this thing? I don't know. Uh, it's got a pretty simple work, you know, basically structural model, right? Uh, like this, this tool, howdy music underscore music underscore songs. It, uh, you know, queries the YouTube, it first looks on music brains, can it find the song? And if it can, it queries YouTube, you know, the a uh, YouTube API. And then uh, you get to choose, there's an interactive step for it. Maybe there's a way to use generative AI to choose the best you know, YouTube clip, automate that a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it uses YouTube DL at the API level to download you know, the M4A version of it. So just the audio part. And then it uh, you know, slaps together the uh, metadata, you know, that it got from music brains onto that, that M4A file, hmm. which you have, saw have, a little bit of. Tanim, have you looked at YT-DLP? Yeah, YT-DLP. Uh, so, where is the code I can show? I was wondering if I had... Yeah. So this is pre, 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 uh, uh, what is it? Pre uh, IDEs, this is all in Emacs. Mm -hmm. So it says Pythonics, howdy, uh, howdy, <clears throat> music. And where the hell did I put all this stuff? I can't even remember where a lot of this stuff is. Uh, YT DLP. YTDLP, I can't, yeah, this is like the thing that makes it work is something I don't understand anymore at this point. <laughs> where did I put any of this stuff? Like, I don't know uh, where, uh... command line to works. I have to just go, how do you music right. songs? God damn, it's, it's not great code. <laughs> it made sense when I wrote it. Uh, but like, for instance, uh, how the hell download actual song? I guess so, so this is it. This, reading this is a good exercise in code which, where the author forgot how it works. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a choose YouTube item. <laughs> choose YouTube item, for instance, this is the YouTube search. That's, I gotta go there to see what's happening. There's a YouTube URL, music.get YouTube file. I'm just trying to figure out where the hell I put this stuff. Get YouTube. Where's like so it's in music.py, not music in it.py. It's the Sphinx documentation made sense at one point. I'll give hmm. it that. You see how horrifying this code is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get YouTube uh, file. 
See? Okay, see, import what is it YTDLP. Called? Yeah, it's calling YTDLP, right. But it was a few hops to get there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this is the code that does this crap. And yeah, that's that's uh, what's happening there. As this, uh, it's basically, I don't even know what the hell is happening if oh i guess if it doesn't can't download it it does something else i think <laughs> but if if it does if it works fine there's that tripod it's this thing here that uh basically does the download to an output file so yeah. ydl options no this is a good application for chat gpt Copy it, paste it into Chat GPT. What does this code do? <laughs> I guess if it, yeah, I mean, it's uh, feel free to try that out. I don't know. Chat GPT. What if Chat GPT comes out, comes back with the answer, I quit. <laughs> like, this is terrible. <laughs> what was I made for? <laughs> Kill me now. <laughs> Why did you program me to feel pain? <laughs> and, you know, it's at, at this level, it's basically fire and forget. A uh, funny bit of drama did happen a, a, a few weeks ago. I got an email from, I guess, Google asking me exactly how the, I use their YouTube API service. So I gave uh, irony of ironies, uh, you know, the link to the YouTube, uh, I guess, URL demonstrating how I use Howdy Music songs. So it was like, here's the real application, uh, you know, I'm, I'm downloading for free, you know, this song by uh, Air, called Moon Safari, and here's mm -hmm. how it works. Here's where it all fits in. And uh, they said, okay, thank you for, for taking the time to document your real usage of YouTube API. And I guess uh, I haven't heard anything back from them. <laughs> right, but things are still working. They haven't like shut you down. Yeah, you know, it was a nice run while it lasted. If if that happens, eh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, anything else you want to show us, Tony? Or shall we move on? No, to that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, you know, there's a YouTube video, I think, of when I went deeply into Howdy. I don't think it was even just one uh, meetup. I think it was maybe two or three where I talked about it. Where, because uh, there's a lot of you know command line executables there, yeah. and they do a lot of things. And uh, you know, some of the command line executables uh, are you know run basically at a certain frequency, like to update the TV shows uh, and add them to my Plex server. Uh, I have a, you know, system D unit that does that every, like, three times a day. Uh, yeah, this and that. But all this stuff, it's all on, on GitHub. Nice. All right. Well, I'm going to take the share back. Right. And move on with this summer's adventures. So thanks for the, the technical presentation there, Tanim. Always good to see updates on projects. Tanim's definitely mm -hmm. keeping things going. And also, <laughs> thanks for demoing what it's like to look at your own old code. Like, wait, what the hell does this do? <laughs> hey, as long as it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. And we'll look at some pretty pictures from DEF CON. It should be updated to say SACPI at DEF CON and Burning Man. But realistically, uh, the story is I went to DEF CON as, with a press pass because SACPI is effectively a new media resource. Granted, our uh, subscriber base is not huge. So 
but whatever. Uh, we're proud of every subscriber. All right, so that was DEFCON 31 this year. What is, is there like text over it? And, oh no, it's just like a funky design. Anyway, this was their, uh, this was their logo today. There's, or this year, the, the O on DEFCON is their, their little logo. It's a smiley face kind of skull and crossbones things. They had really cool art like this all over the place. It was a really neat event. Uh, this is your classical uh, DEF CON icon. Uh, here's what it looked like getting into it. This was the registration line. This was room number, I don't know, two of four that you go through or three. Um, took a while in here, but it was pretty neat. While I was there, I met a guy from this YouTube channel called the PC Security Channel. It goes by the name of Leo. A uh, really, really sharp guy. He's got a really neat uh, Discord. I've talked to him a little bit since then. Um, hoping to get him on here and talk a little bit about, well, I guess we don't have to talk about DevCon, but we can talk about uh, security stuff because he has some really interesting perspectives and he's a Python guy too. So Leo, if you're watching this, uh, reach out. I'll probably ping you before you see this. So, or maybe I'll even ping you with the link to this. This is some of the event materials. When once you finally get through registration, they give you a pre, they give you a pass. Um, I I did the the typical registration. It's possible to pre-register. I think there's also some somewhat specialist ways to get in based on past performances. But I got I did the the traditional route, which is to say, you wait in line and you show up with cash in hand and you pay that cash at the front. There's you don't give them your name or ID or anything like that. You just give them money and they give you all the event stuff. So there was a booklet, there were some stickers, there was obviously a, a lanyard, and then there were some other things. On the left side there, there's some funky shapes. Those were a part of like the the lanyard or something. I don't know. There, everything was a puzzle. It was really cool. All right, moving on. All right, so the chill out lounge. <laughs> this is... The Chill Out Lounge, it was one of the first rooms available that was open all the time. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff on the periphery. There's a stage where I was standing. There were some cocktail tables in the middle. There's a bunch of dinner tables with chairs all around. And then funny little centerpieces. Now, in the foreground, that front table, there was a jar. And there were jars on maybe half the tables. And in the jars were wires and blinking lights. And it was filled with liquid, too. So... There were other ones. I don't think I got a good picture on the onto this presentation, but one of the other ones was a it was kind of this little truncated pyramid. I had a whole bunch of interface items and um and blinking lights. And we got there, started playing around with it. I ran into Leo again, the guy that I met in the registration line. And a bunch of us ended up getting kind of picking up the kind of the scent of where things were going with the thing and figured out some things with the the truncated pyramid. It was pretty neat. It was this like mixer area, the chill out lounge. At some point, some guy came came through and pointed out that how things worked and was came up with some interesting stuff. But basically what it, what it led to was a whole bunch of interesting conversations. It also became an area where they put a whole bunch of swag. As you can see, there's some little stuff on the tables. By the end of the event, it was just every single table probably had several hundred stickers on it. People are going by, putting more stuff on, picking them up. Oh, this was the stage that was at the head of the, the shell out room. As you can see, very high production values for the place. Like the art that they were using just for that backdrop. That's not a, a projection. That was a big three-dimensional piece and just really, really interesting stuff. So like I said, I, I went in there as a press guy. Uh, basically all it came down to was emailing them ahead of time and saying like, Hey, I'm working on a sub stack and I've got a YouTube channel. Um, I talk about Python. So he gave me a, a press pass, which made it interesting, easy. When, when going to these events uh, where they give uh, speak like really interesting talks, a whole variety of things. I'll talk about a few of them uh, a little later in this presentation, but so one of them that stuck out, uh, one day it was this one called there are no mushroom clouds in cyber warfare and it was about the difference between cyber war and cyber warfare and that's kind of where we're at 
Ms. Gal Mike Oyang, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Cyber Policy from the Department of Defense was in there talking about all sorts of things, dropping names on on things. Buckshot Yankee I, apparently is a very notorious uh, scenario that happened at some point in the past in the cyberspace. But everyone's heads were nodding along around me and I'm going, oh, what's that? Um, they talk a little bit about the difference between actual war, aka kinetic war versus cyber war, and sort of the differences of how things go along. I, I thought one of the most interesting notes she had was that you know, cyber war definitely hit Ukraine past years, uh, but it didn't bring them to their knees. It's kind of funny. Some of the quotes they had, I, I really like the one that she said, oh, you know, cyber is kind of this afterthought from from a government perspective and you get cowboys saying something like, can I just get a cyber option? Like it's some sort of Hollywood scenario. Uh, she talked a little bit about how cyber scenarios go. I liked her kind of triangle of options, very similar to fast, cheap, uh, and good pick two. But in that case, it's about uh, speed, intensity, control, pick two, as far as your you know, red team or blue team solutions. So the, another one we saw, there's a new DARPA challenge coming up. They announced it uh, just a day or so before at the event. They had a panel with people from, the panel was led by DARPA. And they had people from Anthropic, from Google. Oh, wow, I get that kind of mixed around there. <laughs> from Google, from Microsoft, um, DeepMind, um, OpenAI, and this group called OpenSSF. I kind of switched them around in the middle there. Oh, that's so. <laughs> but anyway, they talked about kind of the state of the art of AI and then what they're hoping for. And how so, long was uh, how long was DefCon for? Was it a whole week or a few days? So it was August tenth through thirteenth. Oh, so okay. Four days, Thursday through Sunday. Oh. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I. <laughs> You know, I got the pictures off of one phone. I was going around with an old phone most of the time, and I took some pictures on it. They were not the highest quality, so I didn't exactly prioritize putting them on here. But there are some uh, pictures of others other days. Um, I transcribed a lot of notes that I took actually just by hand, but I've got a bunch of pictures from my good phone, which I took on the last day. So anyway, the, the DARPA thing, I think this is on day two, so the 11th. And they talk a little bit about uh, each of the groups had, I think maybe two or two or three different chances to, to say their thing on AI and what they're looking for in performances for this upcoming DARPA challenge. The thing is called uh, AI, AI XCC. But you know, Microsoft Sky Dave Weston talked about the difference between static analysis and fuzzing as well as like manual audits of code. Uh, fuzzing was probably the, the word of the event for me. Uh, it's a way by which you kind of brute force your way through testing things. It's good for red teaming. Fuzzing allows you to, I don't Man, I need to do a pre presentation on this one. It seemed super powerful. It came up a million different times. Google had a really interesting goal. They said, the AI, we think we should be able to get to a point where the internet has no bugs and no leaks um and they were very optimistic that the next gen of that is is imminent deep mine has apparently the largest fuzzing cluster cluster out there uh they use it they use recurrent is it reinforcement learning or yeah reinforcement learning for uh code coverage and so fuzzing in their case is going through and just you know following best practices to make sure that all aspects of good coding practices are observed. And so fuzzing is an interesting way to do that. OpenAI, I talked a little bit about their cyber defense from an incubator and accelerator program that's uh, paired up with a million dollar. I think it's, it's dilution free or something, but they're pairing that up with this whole DARPA challenge. So that's pretty generous offer and a potent, potent combo if anyone's got some interesting uh, cybersecurity solutions. Anthropic talked Anthropic's a group that talks a little bit more about prompt engineering, I think, than the actual machine learning, but they're really more oriented towards like how this is shaping culture. I highlighted the point that, you know, no one's really been using these LLMs 
um, but for the last year and change. But yeah, so Google user stories guide, good checks, uh, deep mind. They're talking about, you know, this thing, this a new AI times CC thing, the DARPA challenge, it ends in two years. The qualifications are early next year. Two years from now, the way the things are going in the AI space, it will be a completely different playing field. And so they said, you know, plan for step changes. Um, you're, you're, the tech solution that you choose, if you are going to take this thing on, that you choose now is going to possibly be, you know, just completely antiquated by the time the, the competition ends. So like a good solution will be able to incorporate something that crops up along the way, you know, the, the next LLM type thing. And so Microsoft talks a little bit about how to streamline at scale. Uh, makes sense. Uh, they got Azure going on. And so they're, they're the big winners of the open AI success because that is where all of the open AI thing is, is going on. And so we said, if we're going to do this, it's going to be a giant scale, but it needs to be streamlined or it's going to be far too costly. And so, you know, for all this, it, open AI recommends we think in terms of tool constraints and, and just understand that no matter how it goes, this, this whole space is just going to keep accelerating. So stuff today well something new may break tomorrow so like they say at burning man next year was better so tomorrow was better and you know open ssf says all right in the 50s we failed the 80s we failed but uh, ai is here whether you like it or not there's no more winters so build like and mean it the press thing was interesting you got to go into the press room afterward this guy was pretty cool he talked about the the state of the art of ai and just generally how they're approaching things he's called the it's like cd a o chief digital and artificial intelligence officer for the dod really really great speaker i'm hoping to get him on at some point craig martell dr craig martell that's his press gal he what's up uh kathleen i think i'll follow up an email a lot of cool stages, like I said before, just really awesome art. Like, look at the detail on the podium there. It's a very like, neat looking thing. It's like video game quality art on nearly every possible surface. I really like to get this guy in. Uh, he just goes by the name X on, on uh, I think, IRC or something like that. But he talked a lot about how, how to use generative AI for fuzz testing. And I, he's what was called an offset guy. Can we see his name in there? But yeah, <laughs> chat GPT, write me some fuzz tests for this source code. And he just had really interesting pragmatic applications of how to work with, you know, chat GPT and then the open AI API for GPT-4 and just had a whole lot of kind of pro tips on how best to utilize the thing oh i just noticed that the thing in the background is a rotary phone <laughs> right it's kind of cool. what, what's his name again i need to look at my notes uh, but he just went by x on the thing uh, he was an offset guy offensive security analyst so he'd do a lot right of kind of so yeah, yeah it looks like ai is has a large presence at, at this particular defcon yeah, absolutely um, also you know a, a pr large presence in the places that I choose to went <laughs> choose to go. I did not make it to everything. There was a ton of places, or a ton of different locations, ton of different right. times going on concurrently. I wish I had a little bit more to on uh, CGF. That was one of the biggest categories. Capture the flag, and there were tons of different capture the flag competitions going on. I barely even understand the game, but it literally looked like it was like the de rigueur for a proper DEF CON person. Anyway, so this was what the closing ceremony looked like. If you recognize this room, um, this was the registration line room. At this During the event, they actually split this down the middle and had two different tracks running. But as you can see, that is quite the crowd of, of nerds. Um, it was pretty fun to be around people that kind of talk the same talk i'm used to talking online 
it's kind of weird talking to people in person because in general i'll talk about this stuff and people are like oh, okay maybe you need to get some sleep or something <laughs> but the closing ceremony was awesome they had a ton of really interesting infographics describing various aspects of what was going on at the actual event itself i forget what nox stands for it was like you know, i wish i had that one. Oh, there's the crowd again pretty good size the guy talking on the stage is the founder of it jeff moss aka dark tangent i think but yeah he's been <laughs> this was the 31st one so so besides that first guy, did you find like a fairly significant Python presence? You know, almost everyone knew Python there, but when it came to security, there was just, there was a ton of different ways to slice it. Wish I had the, the map on here, but there were four different buildings that this was in, like four different hotels. Huh. Each hotel had a number of different areas cordoned off. They were called, they were calling them like villages. There were, you know, kind of demographic oriented things. There were uh, hardware oriented things. So like one one of the hardware hacking things was just automotive hacking. They also had aerospace hacking. They had a lock picking village. Uh, they had a red team village. So like offensive cybersecurity stuff. They had blue team village, defensive. They had like reconnaissance. They had They had an AI village as well. They had stuff for like military stuff. They had they had fed things. And like I said, they also had a giant area for capture the flag, this game that they play there. So all manner of things. I went to most of the AI stuff because the main reason that I went there in the first place was uh, I, we did we did well in that in that hackathon. And then I had some security issues and I was thinking, well, you know, I should probably learn a little bit about it. Anyway, moving on with the closing ceremony, uh, I just thought it was great how they went through and gave a whole bunch of like analytics on thing at the end. <laughs> transparency. If you look close at this, it's pretty funny. You know, <laughs> humans arrested two, goons removed from staff three. Goons are the that's the name of the staff members at DefCon. I think it's also a term for like FBI <laughs> or something. It's a joke. Uh, they're they're all you know, hobbyists and whatnot. Humans trespass 10. What was my favorite one? Oh, and the, the second column, the first little stanza there. Fluffy but mean dogs. Three. <laughs> animal on animal violence. Ooh, one. <laughs> Reports of people hacking stuff. Two. <laughs> Although after that, I definitely noticed something happened. So that should be three. This is pretty cool. All right. So one cool thing about DEF CON is people had a lot of fun with their outfits. Yeah. Person on the left's wearing Lilo and Stitch. Guy on the right's got a DEF CON thing. I didn't want to take too many pictures of people. I thought that'd be rude, but I thought it was kind of funny. He's wearing the logo. So I did make it. Oh, some of the events I didn't make it to that I really want to make to in the future. Uh, every day in the morning, I think it's six or maybe seven. <laughs> but can you guess why I didn't make it? Um, but six or seven in the morning, there, there was a group that met at an area I just never discovered. And then they do a 5K run. And it looked like a pretty interesting group. So I'm hoping they get that in the future. There was another one that was also pretty ambitious just to even get to the starting point. I was like half an hour away from the strip to get to the bike shop. But they did a bike ride out to Red Rocks. And it sounded pretty neat. I also got outside the vent and, you know, looked at some of the art and whatnot. There's that giant sphere thing. And I took too many pictures of it because it was really neat, big and weird. I also walked around and saw some of the other hotels and went to this place called Area 15. It's pretty neat. A lot of glow-in-the-dark stuff. There's like a giant tree with a bar on it. Where did you end up staying? At a hotel. It was pretty cool. There's a bag from Area 15. Okay. Uh, and then my, well, I got a few photos from Burning Man. Uh, before we, we move on to Burning Man, uh, any questions about DEF CON? No, cool. Are you gonna Are you gonna go again? I think I probably will go again. I don't know about next year. I guess TBD. Uh, but it was pretty fun, and I definitely learned a lot and met a lot of really interesting people. Um, I'm glad I went. 
is it going to be like the end all be all for me? Like Burning Man, obviously, is. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, someone said they were interested in going if we do a sack pie group next year. So might be worth doing. If we get enough people, we can do some group purchasing, which is a nice way to go because then it's just cheaper for everyone. Uh, have you been, Violet? Would you go if you haven't? Uh, I have never been, but I would be interested in going sometime. Oh, yeah. No, you'd, uh, your people are there for sure. A lot of <laughs> giant brains and clever concepts. Cool. All right. So after that, less, less and less technical content, Burning Man. We just got back from it. That's why I'm in a rental car at a rest stop doing a, doing a Zoom meeting. Um, so this, <laughs> this is what Burning Man looks like kind of on a map. It's a giant pentagon and then a city where everyone puts their tents. It's sort of a partial clock from 10 o'clock to 2. At the dead center is the man. And then at 12 o'clock is the temple. This is what the temple looked like this year. Pretty neat. Lots of uh, CNC work on the, the wood. That was up at the 12 o'clock. Uh, everyone was worried about the mud, so I just wanted to show them how we actually lived. This is like a 10 by 10 portable shed. As you can see, this is actually from the end of the event, but I realized this was a decent way to document it. As you can see in the middle of the tent where it was, it didn't ever really get all that wet. And then around the outside, it just kind of got a little chunky. Uh, this is what it looked like with the tent on the inside. It was pretty cozy. Not exactly the best place to hang out, but it's pretty good to sleep. That's what it looked like outside. Pretty neat. So, so you have a tent inside another tent? Yes. And the reason you do that is tent exposed to wind just gets destroyed. But a tent inside another thing does very well. And then as it turns out, if it rains quite heavily for like a day and a half, then uh, it kind of worked out. Um, yeah. So here's what it looked like after it, it rained that first day. I don't know if you can tell, but that's just uh, puddles <laughs> as far as the eye can see. But we did get a double rainbow, which was kind of neat. Oh, David's off. See you, David. After the double rainbow, we realized we were stuck on the other side of the city, so we waded our way across the lake. And I got this interesting picture with a whole bunch of water. Um, I wish I had a better camera, but it's kind of crazy to see it like that. Uh, some of our friends have a car that's like, a, this is called an art car. You can see there's a bunch of people on it. Um, you can also see there's a bunch of people around it. Um, if you've ever been to Burning Man, this is actually a really weird photo because with the man out in the back, that means these people are in the middle of the whole event. And typically when people are out there, they are on bicycles and there is not a bicycle to be seen. Well, except for on the back of the thing, but <laughs> they got stuck by the man when it rained, so they couldn't move. It's pretty funny. Uh, here's another art car. This one's called a Braxis. It's a giant golden dragon. I think it's built on the back of a bus. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of these things. We played around with this group. They had a ram's head skull thing. And we sat on their art car wearing funny clothes and listening to their electronic music. Uh, our, our neighbors down the way, they burnt some, burnt some wood. They had a really interesting way to do it. As you can see, the, the thing's on a chain, so it's not actually on the ground. Pretty neat. When you burn stuff on the ground, it burns the ground. And then you leave a giant trace. And these guys are all about leave no trace. And we hung out with them as it was muddy. We got nice and... Yeah. Hmm. I wish I had more time to put more photos together, but... This is generally where we spend a bunch of our time. 
anyway, um, so I gotta get back on the road. Uh, and thanks for everyone for joining tonight. Uh, I wish I could add a little bit more, but uh, once again, Tanim, thanks for coming up with the your uh, or, or showing us your latest. Um, uh, if we've got speakers or, or people interested in speaking in the future, reach out to me on on the Discord or on the Slack. Um, but yeah, thanks again, everyone. Uh, have a good rest of your month, I guess, and see you next month. Cheers, folks. Cheers.